I invite you to stand as you were able to do so in hearing the words that are found in the Gospel of John, John 17, verses 1 through 11. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to, the, to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. Please pray with me now the prayer that's found on the screen. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Well, today is a special day in the church. It is entitled Ascension Sunday. Ascension Sunday. Now, Ascension Sunday comes before Pentecost Sunday, and it is 40 days after Easter. So really, it would be on a Thursday. Uh, if, if you want to uh, get technical, so Ascension Day would have been Thursday, or we celebrate it the Sunday afterwards. And we even acknowledge it in our Apostles' Creed, even though we don't always talk about Ascension Sunday, uh, but we refer to it um, as, uh, as Jesus rises. And, uh, and we will remember that again uh, when we take a look in, um, in our Apostles' Creed at the end of our service today, when he ascends into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Uh, from thence you'll come to judge the quick and the dead. You're familiar with the words, of course. It's interesting how um, when we think about ascension these days, I at least don't find it very complicated uh, to imagine what the ascension might have looked like. Uh, I, I could picture it in my mind's eye and some, some sort of beautiful cloud formation and the light that comes out of the cloud. You've seen pictures like that. So beautiful. Come to this ethereal scene of, of, of Jesus floating in the air, um, being taken up uh, to be with God in heaven. Partially, I think we may have an easy, easier time uh, picturing it than maybe um, generations of the past uh, is because of movies uh, or TV shows. We have these amazing uh, creative minds that put together these, uh, these scenes of glory that we can picture and not just uh, stories of faith, uh, of the Christian faith or of other faiths, but but even just scenes that are creative around the idea of ascension. As you know, uh, many novels, books, stories have the Christ character. And, and we, when we study literature, very often we'll say, now who is the Christ character in this story or this book? And so I, I want you to picture in your mind's eye, uh, is there a movie or uh, a, a novel or a, a character that you can think of from any of these uh, genres that um, that depicts the ascension? Are you thinking about it? <laughs> the one that um, that pops into my head, uh, it might be a little bit of play on the words there, but pops into my head is Mary Poppins. 
At the end of Mary Poppins, at the original Mary Poppins, uh, she prepares to leave her charges, as you will remember, Jane and Michael Banks. And of course, she's brought healing joy to their family, the very dysfunctional family that they have. And as the family prepares to, you remember the song, right? Go fly a kite. And uh, when they prepare to go fly a kite, Mary rises into the air with her beautiful, large black umbrella. The wind rises her up. And on the ground, the chimney sweep burp watches her sail up and away. And he winks at her and he says, goodbye, Mary Poppins. Don't stay gone too long. <laughs> I love that. It's this really interesting image, isn't it, though, of ascension and her rising up into the clouds. I suspect you've had some images that you could come up with as well. So yes, this is Ascension Sunday. Let's take a look at the scripture that is found in the Gospel of John. This is actually a continuation of the conversation that Jesus is having with the disciples at the Last Supper. Uh, you will remember that we've already looked at this over the past few weeks. Uh, and, and Jesus continues to talk to the disciples about what is to come. And so, of course, this is actually before the crucifixion. But Jesus is, is, is doing his best to prepare those folks whom he has traveled with, who he loves so much, that love him. He's trying to prepare them for what is to come. And so we hear in these verses uh, some prophetic words. Uh, as we remember, they're still at the Last Supper. And it's almost as if Jesus is saying, I, I have one last thought. One, one, one more thing I have to say to you. And he has shared all of this wisdom with them and, and is trying to prepare them and, and, and almost calm them down for what is to come. And it, it's, it's as if he has, is saying something like, well, okay, I have one last thing to say. And we may even look at it as uh, the famous last words. The famous last words, of course, really for us, uh, the famous last words when we think of Jesus would be the words that he speaks from the cross. But even then, there are other words that Jesus speaks uh, in the resurrection accounts. And so, uh, so we have um, so much wisdom that we can focus on. This is mainly what this scripture talks about uh, is in this John 17, 1 through 11, is Jesus preparing them for what is to come, as he also speaks of glorifying God, and them then in turn doing their best to be glorification here on the earth and what that might look like. It's really about goodbyes, isn't it? It's Jesus getting ready to say goodbye and endings. It's appropriate that we take a look at that this weekend, isn't it? With all of the graduation celebrations going on and so much change happening in the lives of those uh, who are graduating. And not just graduation, but lots of change that's been occurring in our world over the last few months. I remember uh, my graduations and that sense of goodbye that came with them. And I also think of, you know, all of the parents and grandparents and guardians and those who have taken good care of our children and how uh, so many of them are getting ready to head off to college or to, to careers or maybe moving out of the house. There's that feeling in the scripture of that tucking a note in the suitcase, that one final thing that we need to say, that one last, I love you. And... This is what I want you to remember so you stay safe and you're okay. Uh, maybe it's that uh, $20 bill that's tucked somewhere uh, in someone's luggage. So they, as they unpack, they see that and they're remembered. They are remember how much love that they've brought to others and how they're still being taken good care of. It's moving away, even job endings goodbyes. Of course, we think of death when we think of goodbyes. As a pastor, we have the privilege of being with many folks 
as they pass into eternity. And so often um, we have noticed, I have noticed that um, there are there is a bit of fear as someone is passing away when they, of course, they know that that's coming. And there's that sense that they want so much to take care of their loved ones. And they want to make sure that everybody's gonna be okay after they pass. People aren't typically as worried about themselves and what is happening. They know they're in the loving arms of God. But the concern that I hear so often is more about the concern for the other and what's going to happen to their loved ones. They want them to know that they'll be okay and they'll be taken care of. This scripture resonates with those ideas. This is Jesus saying to his beloved disciples, I love you. And we've been on this journey together and I want you to be well taken care of when I go. I don't want to leave you alone, but I, I want to, to make sure that you're prepared for what is to come next. And so Jesus brings them hope by reminding them that they know God. The scripture says, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Of course, this is the prayer of Jesus to God. And this is eternal life, the scripture says. They may know you, the only true God. The hope that we find in this scripture is these words that Jesus says. Says to God about the disciples and frankly, friends, about us. This is eternal life for us. This is our hope. This is our hope that this ending is really only a new beginning. Because eternal life is that we know God. And we know Jesus, whom God has sent. That brings us hope. We're not alone. We belong to God. What encouraging words. Endings do lead to beginnings. That's not always easy, though, because it is important to acknowledge endings and to mourn endings, to grieve the loss of loved ones, to even grieve the change that is occurring in our lives. I think of our graduates, and it can be very sad. Endings can be hard. We need to acknowledge that, especially because we don't always love change. Let me share with you a quote that I suspect you've heard before from Shel Silverstein. There are no happy endings. Endings are the saddest part. So just give me a happy middle and a very happy start. <laughs> Truth. Endings can be hard. They can also be good and important. We know this. Those of us who claim the name Christ, our faith reminds us that death is a doorway to life everlasting. So now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you, the scripture says. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me so that they may be one as we are one. I love that. I feel that way about all of you, wherever you are in the journey just now, if you are facing an ending and a new beginning, if you've said goodbye to a loved one for whatever reason, Holy Father, I pray for you. Protect them in your name. Protect them in your name so that they may be one as we are one. This leaves us a little bit on a cliff because we hear these words, protect them, protect them. How will that happen once Jesus is gone, when Jesus ascends into heaven? Next week, 
stay tuned for Pentecost Sunday because we talk about what happens then. It's this beautiful idea of God's protection. Here is the challenge that I have for you today. What does God's protection look like for you? When you hear those words that Jesus says, Oh God, Holy Father, protect them in your name. Protect them. What does that protection look like for you? Is it a sense of peace in the midst of chaos that only God can give? Somehow those holy hands wrapping you up with so much love and comfort and peace. Is it a holy angelic army ready to do battle on your behalf? Is that God's protection for you? Is it a mixture of those or what else? Think about that throughout this week and follow along with me and give thanks <laughs> that God has never let us go, that we are protected and loved by the Almighty. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. I remind you one more time about Pentecost Sunday next week and graduation Sunday next week as well. Don't forget to wear red and we will celebrate the church and we will celebrate God's protection of us as the comforter comes to be with us. Thanks be to God. So now let's affirm our faith together as we read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now I invite you to hear these words in an attitude of prayer. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is sadness, joy. And where there is darkness, light. O divine master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.